everybody, Deb Tucker here from Studio 180 Design, and I'm going to talk to you today about my Wedge Star tool. Now, some of you, when you see a Wedge Star, may think, this looks familiar, and it does. The Wedge Star Block has a lot of similarities to the Lemoyne Star Block, but they are indeed very different animals. So what I want to do before we get into how we use the tool is talk to you a little bit about how they're different. The Lemoyne Star Block, which I love, and I have a tool for in a process called Rapid Fire Lemoyne Star, makes star blocks that use diamonds that have equal lengths on all sides. But when you make the Lemoyne star block, what you'll notice is that this block, the diamonds are actually tilted. They are not running true north and south or true east and west. They are tilted a little bit to one side or the other. And it doesn't matter whether you set them on point or not. They're always going to be tilted. But when you do the diamond wedge star block, you're going to notice that you actually make an octagon. You turn it into a square by choosing corners that you're going to add so you'll turn the octagon into a block but the diamonds will run true north south and east to west and it's going to open up a whole other line of design possibilities for you and your quilting it does require a different tool you're going to find there's some similarities in the construction and the use of the tools but because one is tilted and one is running true the math that's involved requires a different tool. So let's get started on the wedge star block. When you open the tool, you're gonna to find that the packaging is actually your full set of instructions. In the instructions, I'm gonna point out some things that you wanna keep track of and know about. There's a chart that will allow you to work with the wedge stars in 22 different sizes, all the way from three inch blocks all the way up to 24 inches. That's pretty fantastic that one tool is gonna to do all those sizes. It has illustrated step-by-step -step instructions for three different types of blocks that we use to create the free project that's on the back. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. The free project on the back actually has and contains three specific types of blocks. The first block we call the wedge star. The second block that we're going to talk about is simply made with large wedge pieces. And then we have in the corners of our project what we call a mixed block. And the mixed block is a combination of diamond wedges and large wedges. So three different types of blocks. These are basic. There's a whole bunch of other ideas on the bottom. You can use those or not, but let's talk about what we need to do. So the first block we're going to talk about constructing is the diamond wedge star itself. It's the block that goes in the center of our freelancer project. And I've chosen to work with the 8 inch size for our demonstration purposes. One of the things that I'm going to point out, and it's a little hint that I like to do, when I choose a size to work with, when I go to my cutting chart, I like to take a piece of what's called glow line tape and I take that glow line tape and I position it right across the size that I'm going to be working with. This is a removable tape, it'll come off easily, but it will help me to stay on track with my cutting. All the shapes that are involved in creating our freelancer project are going to come from strips. We need diamond shapes, we need small wedge shapes, and we're going to need large wedges when we pull together those other blocks that are part of the project. So now that we have decided we're going to start with this block, let's talk about what you need to cut those shapes. To cut the diamonds, you're going to be working with strips that are two and a quarter inches wide. Remember, we're making an eight inch block. So I'm starting with diamond strips that are two and a quarter. And I've got diamonds that I'm going to need to cut from my dark fabric and diamonds that are going to need to be cut from my medium fabric. Now when you go to cut your diamonds, one of the tricks that I do is that I open the diamond strips up. Instead of leaving them folded together, either right side or wrong side together, I like to open them up so that I can cut them all either right side up or wrong side up. And what that's going to do is to keep the straight of the grain on the diamonds 
consistent throughout the course of my project. Does it make a big difference? Maybe, maybe not, but you might want to think about it. So I open up my diamond strips. I will stack them one on top of the other. And what I'm going to do then is cut diamonds out of the strip. Now this strip is two and a quarter inches. So when I make my cuts across, they're going to be at two and a quarter inches. First step to making the cut is to set up and establish a good 45 degree angle at the one end. If you're right-handed, you'll be starting at this end. If you happen to be a left-handed cutter, you'll be working from this end, setting up your angle cut and working back in the other direction. So I'm gonna set this up as if I'm right-handed. My strips are aligned. I'm going to set up my first 45 degree cut. The tool actually has a 45 degree angle on it. So what I'm going to do is line up the edge of the tool with the edge of the strip, take the, just a regular six inch by 12 inch ruler, place that over top and trim the end to give me 45 degree angle. Once I have that, I'm gonna use that regular six inch by 12 inch ruler. The strip was cut two and a quarter inches. So what I must then do is line up two and a quarter inches, one, two and one quarter from the edge that I just cut, use that to cut my diamond. After I have my first one cut, it's just a matter of continuing down the strip, line up my two and a quarter. I also like to look at that 45 degree line so that I'm pretty sure that I'm keeping those at a 45 degree cut. One of the other things that I generally do is not make more than about four or five cuts before I come back with this tool reposition it, make sure I've got that good true 45. So that's all there is to cutting the diamonds. How many you need to cut? Well, it's on the back of the pattern, so all you have to do is look at that. So that's how we cut the diamonds. The strips that you use for the wedges. Each of the diamonds has two small wedges that are gonna go on either side of it. To cut those, that's where we're gonna pull in the wedge star tool. Let me find my strips. These strips are cut three and a quarter, and I need a dark strip for those dark wedges, and I need a light strip for the other one. Again, you can layer if you would like. I'll put the lighter one on top so hopefully you can see that. It doesn't matter whether the strips are right side together, wrong side together, or right side up or wrong side up, because you're gonna have bias in the same area. So don't, don't stress so much about this. Do remember the width of your strip, I cut my strips three and a quarter inches, that's the number that I'm gonna to have to find on my tool. What I'm looking for, I'm looking at the numbers that run along the outside edge of the tool, and I'm gonna find three and one quarter. So there's my three inch. I come down to the next mark, that's three and a quarter. The half inch and whole inch have lines that go all the way across. The quarter and three quarters just have marks basically at the edges. When I line up the three and a quarter inch marks, which is the same size as my strip, you're gonna find that it's not gonna give me a point up here. It's gonna give me a little bit of a cropped top on my triangle. I'm gonna pull that pink one out so you get a chance to see what I'm talking about. It's not quite pointy, it's just a, a little bit of a crop top. That's what you want to have happen. So after you cut the first one out of your strip set, you've got a couple of options. One of the things that we have in the instructions is to take your tool from this orientation to make those cuts, rotate the tool, find that same three and a quarter inch line, and I'm looking at it kind of upside down right now, but I'm lining up the three and a quarter here, and I'm lining up the edge of my tool with the cut edge of the strip, and making my second cut in that direction. You're gonna see the same thing, the little crop top is there. And that's one way to cut it, but there's another way, and I'm gonna explain it to you. It's not written in the instructions, but it's gonna give you a choice. After I make that first cut, this is a comfortable cut for me. And again, lefties, you'd be starting at this end and working your way in this direction. Right-handers, you're starting at the left and moving to the right. But line up my three and a quarter, after I make this comfortable cut, and I, sometimes if I'm moving things, I'll make a little sliver cut to just make sure those are nice and straight. But instead of rotating the ruler, one of the options is to take the strip set and flip it over. So that I'm always keeping my tool in the same orientation instead of rotating the tool and looking again at the same lines. Now, because I moved the strip, one of the things I like to do to 
keep these as, you know, as precise as possible, is to trim and make those same comfortable cuts for me every time I flip the strip, top to bottom. This is how I tend to work, but you can do either way. You can either rotate the tool after you've made that comfortable cut. You can rotate the tool and line it up this way, or you can flip the strip, line up the same guidelines, and cut in this direction. It's your choice, either way. But you're gonna find you need a bunch of those. For the center block, you need eight of the light and eight of the dark for those center diamonds. And it doesn't matter whether you're cutting small wedges or whether you're cutting large wedges, the way that you cut the wedges is exactly the same. When it comes to making the large wedge blocks down the road, you're gonna be cutting those shapes from a five inch strip. You're gonna do exactly the same thing with your cutting. You are gonna put the five inch increment at the bottom. You'll have the little line that's on the top of the tool at the top, giving you that little bit of a chopped top and you'll make your cuts, large wedges, small wedges, all exactly the same way. So that's how we handle the wedges and that's how we handle the diamonds. Once you get those pieces cut, the next thing in the process is to arrange the shapes that you need for the star. And I do this <laughs> carefully every time. I need diamond wedges that are going to have dark diamond, light wedges, and I have diamond wedges in my block that are gonna require the medium value diamonds and the dark wedges for those. Line them up and stack them up. I need four of each, so I would put four in this pile and four in each of these piles, four of these here, and four of these here. Work assembly line, it'll help keep you on track. First thing we're gonna do is stitch the right hand wedge first. To do that, you slip the wedges over so they're right sides together. I pretty much just line up tip to tip. Those two tips pretty much line up and the bottom end hangs out. So I go to my sewing machine and I will stitch Give your press toward the diamonds, and then get ready to add the second diamond. Now you have a choice here. You can leave the dog ear that's hanging over on there if you would like, or you can simply snip it off. That's usually what I do. I take that dog ear before I sew that second diamond on there, and I just give it a little snip. It's snipped even with the edge of the diamond, so that I can go ahead and position this. When I position the second diamond on there, I try to position it so that it's not too far this way or too far this way. I kind of split the difference so that when I'm positioning this and I'm gonna be stitching a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna be hitting those valleys on both of those two little areas. They're the areas that are kind of the low spot between the two. If you do that, that's gonna be your centering Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, everything that we do with Studio 180 is gonna be oversized. And once you have those stitched on, you see this one has the dog ear trimmed and this one does not. Either way is okay. But a lot of times if you're using the light and you're pressing back, you might see some color coming through there. Another reason to remove those dog ears. But you'll press these seams then toward the triangles. That's all that you need to do to make those diamond wedges. And don't worry if they don't line up perfectly because this is where the wedge star tool is gonna to come into play. The wedge star tool has guidelines on it to be able to line up with the sewing lines that I've already done and trim this to a precision size. I don't know if you caught this, but at the beginning we said we were making eight inch blocks. What I'm gonna look at now are the guidelines here on this edge of the tool that have the eight on them. Because that's gonna allow me to take the number eight and the solid guidelines that are right beside that. We've got a line here and a line here, allowing me to trim off any of the inaccuracies that may have happened. Now I'm a pretty good sewer and a pretty good piecer, but what I trim off isn't exactly the same, that's okay. What I've ended up with is a perfect piece to be able to build my star with a better success rate. So that's how you trim if you're right-handed. What you're gonna do if you're left-handed is point your diamond wedge toward 
a 10 o'clock position so that you're going to line up the same guidelines you're looking at those same eight inch guidelines we're not changing that but you're orienting this so that you can trim this way and then trim this way if you are left-handed once you have your pieces you'll arrange them one to the next to the next into your units when you go to construct you're going to put them together into pairs so you'll line them up pair to pair um, and begin to piece them together little bit of word to the wise is when you put them together always put the same one on top if you sew them with the same fabric on top your wedges will alternate and it will go light dark light dark light dark if you happen to pick one up and sew it with the dark on top this one has the light on top this one has the dark on top if I stitched here I would have a pair that looks like this if I stitch here with the dark on top I have a pair and notice what happens when I go to put them together they no longer alternate so when you pick up your pairs I lay out your block the way you want it to position the same light on top or dark on top always the same line up the edges that you've just trimmed line up the points line up the seams those seams if you've pressed correctly will nest you should stitch from the diamond tip toward the outside and when you do that it is going to give you pairs that look like this perfectly matched in the center here and you'll need four of those once you have all of those I'm going to trim off the dog ears but I also do a little thing here that helps me get a little bit more refined construction I use my tucker trimmer when I do this step and I'm using the long straight diagonal along the seam and I'm essentially just trimming off the dog ears but occasionally in handling because there's a lot of bias involved in this you might not get this perfectly at a 90 degree angle so I use this opportunity when I get rid of the dog ears to also give that corner a little shave I'm shaving off just a few little threads but what I'm doing is refining that 90 degree angle so that when I put this together all eight of my points are going to line up again primarily it's to trim off the dog ears but use this to give that corner a little shave and you never want to take off more than just a thread or two when you square up those edges so once you have your quadrants you have your quarters you'll begin to put your quarters together into pairs and eventually you will end up with this block hoorah block number one is done it really took a long time to explain this to you but it's really not very hard to put it together when we go to make some of the other blocks I'm going to talk to you about making all the blocks before I talk to you about turning them into actual squares because each of these octagons is going to get triangles on the corners to be able to turn them into squares so you saw how we did the diamond wedge when you do the large wedge blocks what you want to do is it's much simpler you don't have to piece all the wedges ahead of time you'll simply work with larger wedges for our freelancer pattern the wedge orientation is a little unusual it will have a dark wedge at one side two accent wedges here and then it's going to be surrounded all the rest of the wedges are going to be your background fabric so here you don't always have that light dark orientation when you go to pick these up to sew them do the same thing put the right one on top put the right one on top put the right one on top and put the right one on top so orient them and then when you pick them up pick them up in the same orientation so that you're stitching these two together lining up the raw edges stitching with a quarter of an inch stitching these two together line them up one of the things that I like to do when I'm working with the wedge star blocks only is to press all my seams open so once I turn them into pairs what I do is stitch each pair open stitch the pairs open when I put those together and stitch the final thing open pressing all those seams open really helps to give you a nice flat center so the wedges 
but they're really simple. You trim up the dog ears the same way that we trimmed up the dog ears on the large one, taking just a little shave around that 90 degree corner. And when it comes to a mixed block, you'll see that it's pretty much the same as the other two, except you're mixing and matching your wedges. Take a look at your diagram on the back of your project. I usually position my wedge pieces first, one in the south, one in the north, one on each of the east and west, and then fill in the blanks with my background wedges here and here, fill in my blanks around my dark wedge with my two accent wedges. Because you're mixing and matching here on the mixed blocks, what you'll notice is your diamond wedges, because of the way we built them and trimmed them down, have a very crisp point. The large wedges, because we cut them out of the strip, have that little bit of a cropped top. Don't worry about that. What you want to do when you position one on top of the other, don't worry that there's a tip. It's all part of the dog ear that you trim off anyway. You want to make sure that when you sew, you accurately line up the raw edges of the diamond wedge with the large wedge. Because that diamond wedge is the piece that I trim to a precision size, I like to keep my eye on that one. So I make sure that when I stitch these, especially the mixed blocks where I'm mixing and matching a diamond wedge with a plain wedge, I would stitch them one behind the other behind the other from the point to the end, but I would do that with the diamond wedge on top. And again, press those seams open. Press the pairs open. When you're putting the pairs together, press those open and press all those open to help give you flat centers there. So what you'll do to make the Freelancer project is construct one that look like this. You will need four blocks that look like this and you're gonna need four blocks that look like this. One, four, and four. And what we're gonna do next is talk to you about how we add the corners to each of those blocks. And it depends on which shapes, the diamond wedges or the large wedges, are gonna get the corners, how you go about trimming that down. So give me a second to regroup here and then we'll talk about how we're going to add those corners to the different blocks.